Hi, this is Kathy from Kathy Adams Mixed Up Art. I'm sharing a project today on how I mix patterns using gel press prints. I really love mixing patterns, but sometimes it can be tricky. During this video, I'll share some of the ways that I've found to make mixing these patterns a success. So I'm using the 6x6 gel press. I'm using alcohol inks, which are transparent. And I'm using some black and white printed paper. I'm also using some mark making things like bubble wrap, rubber stamps, catalyst tools. You'll see that I'm wearing rubber gloves. And that's because I've learned from experience that alcohol inks really stain your hands and they're really hard to get off. So for the first print that I'm making, I put some alcohol ink onto the gel press plate and I put a little bit of hand sanitizer onto the plate with it. The reason why I'm using hand sanitizer is because the alcohol inks are very fluid and the hand sanitizer has a bit of gel in it and it really helps the pattern to stabilize a little bit so I get a better pattern. Some of the patterns that I'm making here in the alcohol inks are going to be more visible on the lighter prints. So let me talk a little bit about mixing colors on the gel press plate. This is one of the really fun things that I love about using a gel press plate is that you can put more than one color of whatever medium that you're using. Um, I would suggest though, when you're starting out, use like colors. Um, colors that are similar to one another, you know, like, like red and yellow or orange and pink. Um, because if you use colors like that are complementary to each other, like blue and orange, you may end up making mud and you may not have successful prints. There are ways to use colors like that, but you have to play around with it a little bit. So back to my printing, I ended up putting a bit too much blue onto the plate. I'm just making some marks with a catalyst tool and I'm gonna get a really really pretty rich color here and I really I love this print uh, I didn't really mean to use that much blue but it just happened it started to dry a little bit and because there was so much medium on the plate it stuck a little bit which is fine since I'm going to be cutting these up into small squares I can just avoid the area that I ripped. Here I'm just using what was on the plate already and I pressed a star stamp into it. I'm not cleaning my plate off here and I'm adding some red so I'm going to get a really interesting purple. Now I'm going to be using some black and white acrylic paint. Adding touches of black and white adds contrast to the prints and is really going to make those colors more vibrant. Here are some of the prints that I've made so far and some of these prints I decided not to use for whatever reason. Um, I, you can see all the different patterns that I have. Um, it's, it's really important to use the same stamps and mark making tools over and over again. Um, but maybe changing the color or the size 
and it really helps to unify a project where you, you you're mixing together different prints so I'm just finishing up with the white acrylic paint and I have some black acrylic paint here just adding some small marks some of my prints were kind of muted and I really want some bright color to, to show up and I'm using some stamps here some numbers and a circle stamp with some red dilutions paint now I'm switching to it's a Dina Wakely paint it's called night and it's a very dark blue almost a black and I've added some retarder to extend the drying time I'm using a paper artsy eclectica stamp set which has lots of interesting shapes and I really love this plus sign shape it's one of the shapes that I like to use over and over again one thing that's really important in your art and it means a lot more when you use shapes and patterns that really speak to you I love circles I love stars numbers I really love eyes and I love plus signs so that's why I'm repeating those shapes in my prints today and also if you vary the size and color of those shapes it really adds to the interest and variety of the finished project so here I'm cutting out my squares using a one and a half inch punch this allows me to put 16 squares on the six inch by six inch board I have enough squares to pick out my favorites and arrange them on my board I also decided to make a board that has two inch squares so I picked out my favorites and I'm going to be attaching them to my board with heavy gel medium I'm going to carefully put them aside here in order and then I'll be using a brush to paint on a thin layer of the gel medium I'm doing it a section at a time so that my gel medium doesn't start to dry because it does dry fairly quickly so I'm just I'm doing four squares at a time and I'll just be repeating this until I'm finished attaching them to the board I had lots of squares left over so I decided to do another board that has the 16 squares on it and then I also have the one that has two inch squares I'm giving all three of my boards a few coats of Liquitex matte medium for my focal image I decided to use two stencil girl stencils I'm going to be masking off areas of this stencil that I do not want to use on my boards so I use masking tape and I just place the masking tape on the areas of the stencil that I don't want to show up I'm placing my stencil onto my one of my backgrounds and I just tack it into place with a piece of tape so that it doesn't move to get the best image using a stencil use a good quality sponge and I'm using black acrylic paint here I apply some paint to my sponge and then I dab off that paint I want as little paint as possible on my sponge and I'm using a pouncing up and down motion as I'm applying the paint through the stencil this is going to give me the best results So I'm just repeating the same thing I add a little bit of paint to my sponge then dab off that paint then I'm using an up and down dabbing motion onto the stencil and you notice I'm not going back for more paint because I've got plenty of paint on the sponge 
I have a die cut word that I cut out of my Silhouette Cameo die cutting machine and I'm attaching it with Liquitex Matte Medium. So I'm just adding some finishing touches here. I'm going to do uh, paint the sides black to give it give each piece a more finished look. And once I'm done with that and everything is dry, I'm going to use Liquitex pouring medium and give each piece a coat, which is going to add a durable, glossy finish and it's going to seal everything into place. Once you've applied the pouring medium, set each piece aside to dry completely. Thanks for watching, and if you could like this video and subscribe to our Gel Press YouTube channel for lots more inspiration.